Welcome! In this video I will be solving Griffith's problem 6.28 as it appears on the third edition of his quantum mechanics book. Now this is an incredibly important problem so please make sure to actually watch it because this will give us a tool to solve problems in perturbational theory much, much easier. So if you have been following this course, you will have noticed that two videos ago, we solved the energy corrections for the relativistic hydrogen atom. And there we encountered the problem that we needed the expectation values of one over R and one over R squared. And that proved to be extremely, extremely annoying. It was in an insanely large integral and using this theorem we will find a way to calculate it and to actually find a, a general formula to it it's going to be super 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 easy with this so please um, make sure to actually follow through and understand this because when i had a test on this if i hadn't known this theorem i wouldn't have been able to complete the test because i had to do the calculation that we had there from scratch in like an hour and a half and many of my classmates didn't have enough time and the only reason i had enough time was because i used this theorem so it's really important that you know it okay e enough chatter let's get into it so this problem states the following it says that the feynman hellman theorem can be used to determine the expectation values of one over r and one over r squared for hydrogen remember that the effective Hamiltonian for the radial, radial wave function is this beast right there, which we have found in the first course in quantum mechanics. And the eigenvalues are this right there, which we have also found in the first part of this course, except that maybe you saw this in terms of the Bohr radius, um, but it's the same thing as this. Now, using the feynman hellman theorem, but with the parameter to be E, the charge of the electron, then uh, we will use that to obtain 1 over r. And why? how did we choose lambda equal e? Well, because we know that we want to find the expectation value of 1 over r. And we know that the feynman hellman theorem tells us that the derivative with respect to our parameter of the energy is going to be equal to the expectation value of the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to the parameter. So if we want to find the expectation value of 1 over r, we want to find something that when we plug it in here, it will have 1 over r. And if we look at this, the only way that it happens is with this term right here. So th there's no 1 over r here or here. It's 1 over r squared. You know? um, so the only way that we can get it is if we use a parameter to, that is somewhere in here. And the best parameter here would be e because that's also in the energy part. Okay, that's why we choose the parameter to be E. Okay, so using lambda equal E. Well, the derivative with respect to lambda, which in this case, of course, is E. Well, what would that be? Well, we have to derive this with respect to E. So we get minus four times M, but the four cancels out with a 32. So we get minus M, E cubed divided by 8 pi squared epsilon 0 squared h bar squared n squared. All right, great. And what about the Hamiltonian? So now the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to E will be minus the 2 will cancel out with the 4. So we get minus E divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 times 1 over R. So let us now go to the next page and plug all of this into the feynman hellman theorem. All right, so let's plug it in. So when we do that, what do we get? Left hand side will be this right here. Right hand side will be the expectation value of this. All right, so we can now start simplifying a little bit because well, this mi this plus cancels out this i mean the minus signs cancel out we get plus and these things right here they are all constants so we can actually write them outside of the expectation value so we get uh, e divided by 2 pi epsilon 0 and we can now start canceling some things so this e will cancel out the cubed we will get e squared epsilon 0 here will cancel out that this pi will cancel out this and this two will cancel out this and turn it into a four. So what do we get? What we get is m 
e squared divided by four pi epsilon zero h bar squared n squared. And this is equal to the expectation value of one over r. And this is in principle already correct, but we might want to write this in terms of the Bohr radius, which as you might recall, I have written down because I don't usually memorize it. Um, the Bohr radius a is four pi epsilon zero h bar squared divided by m e squared. Okay, so using this, you can see that we have basically the same thing. So we have four pi epsilon zero h bar squared and m e squared. So this is in fact one over n squared times a. Okay, so this, this was quite simple. And let us now recall two videos ago, we found the expectation value of one over r for the case n equals four. And what did we get in that case? We had, if I remember correctly, it was 16a or one over 16a. And it's exactly the same that we have here. So what we could have done instead of integrating is using this theorem and saying, okay, n is equal to four. There you go. This is one over 16a, bam, super easy. Um, so now we can actually do that. Okay, um, and let's continue. So, I mean, it was actually one page of calculations. Well, <laughs> that was not what I was supposed to do. Um, this is one page of calculations. And remember how long it took us last time. So let's now take a step back and now go for one over r squared. Now, of course, um, they already spoiled that we have to use lambda equal to L, but let's pretend that we don't know that. So how could we know which parameter to use? So we know that we're looking for one over r squared, just as we did before. So we want something that is in this term right there. So we could go for h bar, right? But the problem is that we, if we include h bar, then all of a sudden we are going to get some terms from the kinetic part. And we don't really want that. That's, that's a bit, uh, that's going to be harder for us. So instead let's just go for L because L is exclusively in the term that we care about, right? And for the same reason, going for M doesn't make sense. We're just going to make this problem harder. All right. And now there is a slight issue, right? If we go for L, then here we don't really have an L or do we? Here we have to remember that N, the way we defined it back then is that it's going to be the maximum value of J, right? Plus L plus one. Okay, so we are actually going to have to use this definition here. And with that in mind, we will write the energy as minus m e to the fourth power 32 pi squared epsilon zero squared h bar squared and then j max plus l plus one squared. Okay, that's what we are going to use. Amazing. Let's now derive all of this. I think I might need some space here. So the derivative of the energy with respect to L. Now that is going to be, well, we have all the constants in front. They will not change. So we get minus M e to the fourth power 32 pi squared epsilon zero squared H bar squared. And now comes the difference. So we have to derive this. So we're going to get a minus two coming from the exponent. So the minus will cancel out this and we will have a two in front and then we will get this thing cubed in the denominator, right? So we get plus one over J max plus L plus one cubed. And of course, times the derivative of what is in here. However, because we are deriving with respect to L, the derivative of this with respect to L is simply one. So, you know, it doesn't make a difference. And let's now just write this once again as N because it's annoying to have to write all of that. Okay, so this is the derivative. And we can, of course, simplify this two right here with the 32 in the denominator and we get 16. Amazing, let's now go for the Hamiltonian. So the derivative of the Hamiltonian with respect to L. Now, this we can take as L squared plus L, which is going to make it a bit quicker to derive. So we're going to get 2L plus one divided by R squared. Okay, cool. Let's now copy this, go to a new page and solve. Because now we just have to plug this into the Feynman, Feynman Hellman theorem, which basically means this right here 
Has to, oh Jesus, oh no, oh my lord, what have I done? Is that it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, can't click it. Okay, third time is the charm. Okay, there we go, easy, first try. Uh, this has to be equal to the expectation value of what we have there. So this is going to be equal to this. Once again, we can pull out all of the constants from in here. So that basically means we're going to get the expectation value. So we get h bar squared 2m times 2l plus 1 times the expectation value of 1 over r squared. And well, now we have to, you know, multiply through. Um, so isolate this part. Um, so what do we get? We are going to get, well, this two will cancel out part of this. So this will be h, uh, eight, sorry. Um, so we get m squared e to the fourth power divided by, let's see. And then we have eight pi squared epsilon zero squared h bar to the fourth power and uh, then we have n cubed and 2l plus 1. And this has to be equal to 1 over r squared. Okay, let me double check. Um, so we get m squared e to the fourth power, then we get 8 pi squared epsilon 0. All right, I think it's correct. Now let's take this to a new page and try to simplify it a little bit. Okay, so let us now re remember what was the Bohr radius. Now the Bohr radius, as we already saw, is 4 pi, whoops, that's, that's weird, 4 pi epsilon 0 times h bar squared divided by m e squared. So if we take a look at this, we almost have a squared, except that there is a 2 missing in here, right? If we had 16 instead of 8, then we would have a squared. So let's try to pull out a 2 from here. So factor out 2 from this parenthesis here. So this 2 goes outside. This becomes 1 divided by 2, and we get a 2 here. So we get the 16. So what this means is that now we have 1 over a squared times n cubed times l plus 1 half is equal to the expectation value of 1 over r squared. And See how easy this is. And this is now a general formula. So next time, if somebody says, well, what's the expectation value of one over R squared for, I don't know, N equals seven. You just uh, plug it in here while you need the value of L, of course. Um, so, and for the example we did in a previous video, we had N equals four, L equals zero, right? So in that case, we got one over 32 A squared. And here we can corroborate that because n cubed, what is that? n cubed is 4 cubed, which is 64, times 1 half, which is 32. So in fact, we get back immediately what previously took us so long and so much pain and so many tears. Um, so yeah, this is extremely, extremely useful. So I hope that this made it clear for you. Uh, it's really not hard to use at all. You just have to know what you are looking for and it can be really, really uh, useful. So um, that is it for this video. If this was useful, please make sure to leave a like on the video, share it maybe with some of your classmates who might also benefit from this and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It doesn't cost you anything, but it really helps me out a lot. So I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.